Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Inform Coaches webinar. My name is Shandy Hatfield, and I work here at Nature Sunshine's home office with our Inform program. So for today's topic, we actually um, are going to be spending the next two weeks talking about the meal plan. We've actually had a lot of questions come in, and um, so we, we thought it was really important that we, we spend a couple weeks just covering that meal plan in depth. So uh, what we're actually going to be doing today is um, we did a webinar. It was back right after convention, I think back in May, um, where we went over in-depth on the meal plan, and we had um, on with us Dr. Uh, Joseph Lamb. So we actually are going to rebroadcast that webinar and then we'll have a follow-up webinar next week where we'll go even further in depth on the meal plan uh, with Dr. Pacheco. So you'll want to make sure to, to make that webinar as well. So um, what we'll do is we'll rebroadcast that webinar and also the Q&A section from that webinar. Um, however, any additional time after that, we will answer any other questions that you have. So feel free to type in any questions or comments that you have as we go along, and we'll do our best to save some time to answer those as well. Um, and anything we can't get to today, we'll cover next week. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start that recording, and um, we'll uh, have Dr. Joseph Lamb with us as well as Sarah Eliasson. So let me go ahead and start that, and uh, we'll get going today. Thank you. So we've got uh, two guests on our webinar today. We have got Dr. Joseph Lamb. He is our medical director of our Hughes Center for Research and Innovation and was the uh, principal investigator for our INFORM study that um, we launched at convention that you hope we have the opportunity to learn more about. And we also have um, Sarah Eliason, and she is a research scientist here at Nature Sunshine. So welcome, Dr. Lamb and Sarah. Thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. So um, what we're going to do is uh, Dr. Lamb's going to just talk to us a little bit, and then um, we have a presentation on the meal plan, and then we'll answer questions right there at the, at the end. So Dr. Lamb, I'm going to turn a few moments over to you to tell us a little bit about um, kind of the thought and science behind that meal plan. Great. So I hope everyone's having a good day. And the question coming to my mind is, if you are having a good day, how do you know that? And more importantly, how does your body know if you're having a good day? And basically, that's a question that our bodies ask every day as they look kind of at the sum total of what's been going on in the last 24 hours. They kind of ask themselves, was yesterday a good day? Was yesterday a bad day? And if yesterday wasn't such a good day, what am I going to do to take better care of myself today? And through our history as human beings, you know, through the time that you know we've lived, you know, not so much 20th century, though for a lot of people it's still this way in the 20th century, but certainly in the centuries that preceded this. When we were tied to agriculture and we were tied to what was going on uh, in our communities and to the weather and the time of year, our bodies basically developed techniques to help us defend ourselves against not having enough shelter, not having enough warmth, not having enough food. And when those days came, when there were bad messages, when our vitamin D levels were low because it had been winter for so long, when it was late in the season and the early spring vegetables had gone away and we were now looking instead of the fresh greens and some cruciferous vegetables which come up early and lettuces, we're now looking more at gourd vegetables, fruits and the such like. You know, as all those changes took place, messages were coming to us to do something different with the calories. And considering that for most of human existence, the challenge was not getting enough calories, messages were very important to us. And if we got the right messages, the right messages from food, and the reason I spent so much time on this is 
and coming to that concept that you all know of phytonutrients. And the concept that there are nutrients in plants that aren't vitamins, that aren't no uh, minerals, that aren't um, you know calorie providing macronutrients. Instead, they're compounds that provide information and they provide signals and they play a role in helping our bodies decide whether yesterday was a good day or whether yesterday was a bad day. And so if it were a bad day yesterday, then today we want to handle that calorie differently than we would if it was a good day. If it's bright and sunny and our vitamin D levels have been increasing day after day because of sunlight and we're getting the green and we're getting all these good messages, we'll be active and we'll burn calories and we'll use them for activity and we'll use them for exercise and we'll use them to get moving. But if it's not a good day, we want to either hold on to a calorie or use it to generate some heat. And so we do different things. The real challenge for us living in the 21st century is that the American diet, while for most of us, it's not um, calorie restricted at all. Indeed, it's an excess of calories. It's coming along with bad messages. You know, we live lives as if it was the winter time in terms of the messages that most of us get from our foods. You know, if we're only eating one to two vegetables and fruits a day, we're not getting very many phytonutrient messages. If we're not getting quality protein, if we're getting too many bad fats, all of those messages, coupled with not getting activity, not getting sunlight, not getting vitamin D levels up, all these things tell us to hold on to a calorie. So this food plan, which you're going to be hearing about in detail from Shandy in just a moment, has a couple features that make it suited for restoring that balance, allowing the body to feel like it's a good day to burn a calorie. And so that's the characteristics that we put together. So it's a high protein, high phytonutrient food plan. Those are the things that we're emphasizing. We emphasize the protein because it helps us preserve our muscle mass. You know, so when we lose, we'll lose fat. We won't lose muscle if we take in enough protein. Lots of phytonutrients that say it's okay to be in fat burning mode. Quality fat, because we want to preserve you know, our cell membranes, we want to have an anti-inflammatory um, effect from good healthy fat. You know, we want to maintain you know, appropriate cholesterol numbers, you know, support for having the right sort of lipid that we get from you know, omega-9, for example. You know, all of those messages coming together, coupled with the fact that, as you've noticed, we've cut out refined carbohydrates and such like, so it becomes a low glycemic impact diet, meaning that it does not drive up insulin levels, it does not drive up blood sugar levels. So that keeps us in the mode of let's burn our carbohydrates that come in, let's burn the fats that come in, let's be in fat burning mode as opposed to let's store. You know, it's interesting when our insulin levels are high and when they're high consistently, our muscle cells and our liver cells say no to getting more energy in the form of glucose and triglycerides. But the fat cell continues to say bring it on and it brings it on until the point that it can't take anymore and the cell undergoes, you know, an unplanned cell death, kind of a necrotic cell death. And as a consequence, it sends out inflammatory messages that make us more insulin resistant and make us more likely to store fat. So everything that went into planning this diet, high protein, high phytonutrients, good quality fat, low glycemic impact food plan, all of this is designed to send the message that yes, yesterday and today are good days and we can have favorable changes in our physiology that get us back to where we want to be. So that's the run-in. 
So thank you so much, Dr. Lam. I think that is really important for all of us to understand is that each piece of this meal plan has been, uh, I mean, it's there for a purpose. And I think uh, how you just explain that to all of us will, will help us understand why each of the pieces that we'll go on and discuss are there. So thanks so much. You're very and, welcome. And as we go along, if there's any point that you or Sarah want to chime in, um, that would be completely welcome. So feel free, and then uh, we'll make sure to save plenty of time for questions. So, all right. Well, should we jump right on into this? Um, okay. So we've already kind of uh, Dr. Lamb did a great job of going over some of these basic things. Um, it's a modified Mediterranean approach. Um, we're choosing foods that are rich in protein and phytonutrient packed. So. Um, You'll see in the meal plan how those are all built in. Uh, we're count, continuing to count servings of food, not the calories. So in the previous Infor meal plan, uh, we did the same thing, just counting the number of servings. Um, you'll see, and you may already be familiar with the new plan, but uh, the servings that we're counting are a little bit different, um, but we're still focusing on those servings. Uh, we're going to be um, consuming five meals and snacks daily. Um, so that's broken down as to three meals and two snacks. And we're limiting our sugars like um, we previously did, and those were fine carbohydrates. And um, new to this, this program is grains. We're limiting those as well. So uh, this can be found in your coach's manual, also in the participant manual. This is how the serving sizes are broken down. And we will go into each one of these at a time. Um, but just a quick overview, you have meal proteins, a total serving three, snack proteins, two servings a day, um, vegetables is now up to six servings every day. Uh, we have a new category on here that is fresh greens, five ounces, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. Um, one fruit a day um, or a legume is optional. Um, that can replace a fruit serving. And uh, dairy, one serving is also optional. It would uh, replace one of your snack proteins. And, and we'll go into these a little bit more in detail. And then also a new category, oils and fats, uh, five servings. And, and Dr. Lamb just talked about how important those healthy fats are. And, and that was something that was missing in our previous um, version of the meal plan. So we now have that included. And then your water will stay the same. Half of your body weight in ounces up to 100 ounces. So let's dive into what each of these are. So your meal proteins, um, three servings a day. Your serving size is um, palm size. So that's something that um, is really visual for you to know that you're eating the correct uh, amount of food. Um, a serving size uh, isn't sometimes what the portion size is that we're often served at restaurants or at home, maybe uh, getting served a 12-ounce steak and thinking that that's uh, a serving of protein. Um, so when you're, when you're eating your protein, look at your palm size and you want to, to stay within that range. We don't want to, to overeat there. So that's a good visual. Uh, your snack protein, you're going to have two servings per day, and it is half a palm size, uh, so just half as, half as much as the meal protein. Um, a couple things to note is that your one dairy serving can, place, can replace one snack protein. Um, also, one of your servings of protein, your snack protein, could also be nuts or seeds. Uh, so those are some options that can fit in your snack protein. Uh, I have a couple of, well, I have the examples that are um, listed in your manual in the slides. We're not going to go through all of these, um, but I wanted you to have that as a resource in a slide format um, if you'd like. So um, we'll just pick out a couple of here. So fish and shellfish fit in this area, wild game, beef, um, poultry. Uh, two eggs are considered a palm size serving. Uh, also, don't forget your metabolic age support shakes fit in this category. So. Uh, in the past, in the meal plan, the two shakes were in addition to the meal plan. Um, in the new meal plan, they actually are included. So it's five total servings of protein, including your shake. 
So just be aware of that. Um, also, think about your sources of protein. Um, you want to uh, pick um, organic or wild caught or um, grass fed sources. We, we want to always look at good, better, best and try to go with those, those better and, and best options when at all possible. All right, and then here is your example of nuts and seeds. Uh, so almonds, coconut, uh, pumpkin seeds, all of those kind of things fit in this category. And then here's your example of uh, berries. So milk and yogurt fit in this area. Okay, so vegetables. Um, we've increased this to at least six servings a day. So before it was five plus, and now we've just said uh, six servings, plus we have greens that we'll talk about here in a second. Um, the serving sizes on those, for finely chopped vegetables, it's one half of a cup. And for larger, loose, loosely packed, vegetables it would be one cup and here's some visuals that you can look at as well so that you can start estimating those serving sizes um, without always having to measure them out so you can look at your fist about half of your fist size would be a half a cup and then your entire fist uh, would um, would be one cup so you can start visualizing that uh, here are some examples of vegetables um, that fit in this area so You'll notice these are more of non-starchy type vegetables. So you've got your asparagus and cauliflower and mushrooms and uh, peppers and all of those type of things fit in this category. Okay, uh, a new category is fresh greens. Um, and like Dr. Lamb emphasized, the phytonutrients are, are super important. And so uh, getting the vegetables and the greens in is is really something you want to stress with your participants to, to get those in each day. So um, the fresh greens, how we measure that is actually by weight. So it's five ounces per day. Um, so the weight and the volume equivalents, it really depends on how tightly that it's packed. So um, spinach, about three to four cups is five ounces. Um, Shandy, can I hop in for yep. a second? We do, you absolutely. Uh, one of the things I'd like to say about the grains is whereas all of our other measurements have really been about volume, when we're talking five ounces of greens, we're talking weight. And the reason why we use that five ounce measurement, that's the size of that plastic bag that you can buy of pre-washed greens in the food store and the smaller plastic box size. So it gives you an easy amount to tell someone to have. But that's a weight measurement, not a volume. So that's why you see five ounces equals three to four cups, because that cup is a volume measurement and ounces is a weight measurement. OK, yeah, that's really important to point out. And I think because how they are sold by ounces and in, in weight, I think that does make it helpful if you know I need to do uh, half of this bag today, or um, it, it just lets you to visualize that a little bit better. All right, so fresh greens, yep, that's a, a new category that we really want to emphasize. Um, so here's some examples of, of different types of greens that fit in this area. And we always still want to encourage people to have variety and to try new things. So um, this is a great place to give them ideas of how they can do that. OK, so the fruit and legume categories, it's one serving per day, and you choose either fruit or legume, one or the other, so not both. It's, um, you choose. And um, I'll show you in a second the um, serving sizes for the fruits, because it depends on the fruit. Um, and the legume serving size is one half of a cup. So here's some examples of, of fruits. And, um, also, you want to notice that uh, first bullet point, it says to avoid all dried fruits and fruit juices. So we want um, fresh, fresh fruits. Uh, so avoid those uh, dried fruits and the juice that, uh, yeah, you want to stay away from those. So the serving sizes, um, just a couple of examples, like an apple would be one small, um, berries would be a half a cup, um, blueberries is a fourth of a cup. Um, Melon, one half of a cup. Uh, nectarine, one small. So 
it depends on, on the fruit, so just make sure you pay attention to those serving sizes. Okay, and then the legume is an example. And yeah, sure. I really cut in to jump in for one more second. One of the things that we really have to remember, particularly when we're talking to our patients about veggies and to a lesser extent about fruit, all of these things that they're buying, you know, in the food store, if they're buying them fresh, none of them have a nutrition facts uh, labeling on them. So people don't really know what they're getting when they eat fruits and vegetables. And while some people may think that they're eating them for the fiber and that's the reason why they should be eating them, many people know nothing about the phytonutrients that we talked about earlier. And they look at vegetables as substitutes, right? They think if they take a multivitamin, they'll get everything that they need. And, you know, they think, that, you know, maybe I need the fiber, but I don't need to eat all these because they don't see the benefit of what they're getting. And they look at it as a replacement. They kind of look at it as they don't want me eating bad things. But they want me to eat the vegetables instead of the bad things. It's kind of like... You know, the person who's a smoker who's told to nibble on celery as a substitute for a cigarette, many people think the same way. I'm nibbling on the celery so I'm not eating chocolate. And they don't look at it as such a positive piece of their diet. And we really, it's something that I've learned in both of the big weight loss trials that I've done, you have to get people to understand why they want to eat the vegetables. Fruits, they're a little bit more on board with because, A, it's more limited how much they get, number one, and number two, the thing in their diet that's going to be sweet. But those veggies really push home that the veggies are helping them do the things that they want to do. So yeah, I think that's really, that's really important to, to remember because we're not just eating a lot of vegetables because they're lowering calories. and trying to offset things. We, we need the phytonutrients that, um, that we get from vegetables. I mean, it's, it's vital. We, our bodies need those. So uh, it's kind of a little bit of a mind, uh, mindset shift for some of our participants to understand that. So thanks so much, Dr. Lamb. Keep on jumping in. I think you're adding a lot of really great stuff. All right, so let's talk about um, oils and fats. So this also is one of our new categories in the meal plan. Um, it's five servings uh, per day, and the serving size also varies. So let's look at uh, some examples of what fits in that area. Uh, avocado. Uh, in the past, we may not have been quite sure where to fit avocado <laughs> in the meal plan. So it now fits in the oils and fats category. Um, One-eighth of a medium avocado is a serving. Uh, ground flaxseed also fits in this area. Uh, olives um, fit in this, this category as well. So green or black olives, you can have eight to ten of those as a serving size. Um, and then also our oils for um, cooking and on our salads and our, our marinades, uh, a serving size is one teaspoon. Um, and we've included some examples of, of some healthy oils that you can choose from. So we have things like coconut oil, um, flaxseed oil, extra virgin olive oil, so you know um, what are some healthy fats to choose from. All right, and then beverages. So our water is still going to be extremely important. Uh, half our body weight in ounces per day, up to 100 ounces. Um, so just examples there. Water is unlimited, of course. Um, we're not going to say you can only have, of course you want to cap it at 100 ounces, but uh, we're not really having restrictions too much on water or herbal tea. Um, but on coffee and um, black, green, or white tea, it's a limit of one cup per day. So uh, in the past, we've said you want to, to, of course, limit your caffeine intake. But uh, now we have just an exact exact requirement there. So, Shandy, one more point. Um, I'm sure some people are going to notice that alcohol is not there. And, you know, there's lots of talks about the health benefits of a glass of wine. Dr. Tripp, with all the work that he and I have done on hops in the past, would tell you that, you know, there's benefits to having hops and beer and such like. But the reason why we're really very negative upon alcohol in this program 
is alcohol kicks you out of fat burning mode. Even one serving of alcohol will kick you out of fat burning mode. So all the good work that you put in to get yourself into fat burning mode, being really attentive for two or three days to the dietary program, when you suddenly kick it up and you suddenly add in, um, when you suddenly add in um, a couple days worth of, you know, like one evening's worth even of drinking alcohol, you know, like kick yourself back out of fat burning mode for maybe 24 to 48 hours. So you lose all that hard work and you don't want to lose that. Thanks so much, Dr. Lamb, for, for bringing that point up because um, that wasn't listed here and I think it is important to realize the effect that that can have on our program. Um, I've heard actually from a lot of coaches that that's uh, a big way that people have sabotaged their success is um, over the weekends and having, having something to drink. So uh, thanks for emphasizing that. All right, Thank and you. then so let's just talk a little bit about um, the spices and, and ways that you can flavor your foods, all those add-on things that I know that some people haven't been quite clear on how to handle. So, of course, all fresh and dry herbs, um, those you can put as many as you would like, um, and spices. And, and I think that's a fun way to um, add some more variety to, to what you're eating, is to mix it up with different spices and things like that. Um, also, mustard, horseradish, um, lemon and lime juice, salsa vinegars, um, soy sauce, of course you'd want to uh, probably pick one that's MSG free, and, and fish sauce, those ones are, are fun to use. Uh, you want to look um, though on your um, vinegar sauces and dressings that there's not added, added, added sweeteners or added sugars into that. Um, sometimes they hide in those, I've noticed. If you just turn that label around, uh, look for those added sugars. Um, we really want to refrain from added sweeteners as much as possible, and um, we can use stevia in limited amounts. So uh, that's some ways that you can, can add some variety there to your food. Okay, and then I also wanted to make sure that um, everybody was clear on that, on the supplement program that also goes along with the meal plan. So uh, your two metabolic age support shakes every day, um, and those count as your servings of protein. And then at breakfast, um, you're going to be having an informed berberine and a probiotic. You'll actually have one of each of those at each meal, and then your cardio kit with your dinner. All right. So um, also, I really wanted to draw some attention to some of the study results, um, specifically uh, and, and Dr. Lamb, feel free to jump in if, if there's anything you want to add, but um, we had two groups in the study. We had um, those that were just doing the meal plan alone, and then we also had the group that was doing the informed supplements and the meal plan, and um, the results were pretty, pretty amazing. So, uh, and I think this is a great thing, of course, to share with your participants and, and let them know that with the products, they have a much greater chance of success. And uh, so let me just pull up some of these statistics. 56% more weight loss, 65% uh, more fat loss, 125% um, greater reduction in the systolic blood pressure, and 62% greater reduction in the diastolic blood pressure, 66% uh, greater reduction in triglycerides, 129% greater reduction in cholesterol, and 80% greater reduction in the LDL bad cholesterol. Um, so I think it's important, I mean, to know that the meal plan, of course, is going to provide some great results. It's really, it's a fantastic meal plan. Um, but adding those supplements on top of it just uh, really increases the results so much more than just that meal plan by itself. Uh, anything that uh, you want to add, Dr. Lamb, to that? I do. One of the things, you know, about, and one of the things that is so, so powerful about adding in the supplements is they are all designed, you know, from the probiotics to affect the microbiome, from the, you know, the antioxidants that are in the cardiox LDL, all of these 
have been directly selected in order to change that kind of global message of I can burn a calorie today. I'm in a good place. Life is good. That's what your body feels when it takes the supplement. And you know, when people work hard with their diet, they're sending a lot of the messages, but this gives them that safety net when they're not being so good. And you know, one of the things that you find, you know, the, the shakes, the informed shakes become a really wonderful piece. Because we have really narrowly defined concepts of what breakfast is in this country. And people start getting really like, I don't know what to eat for breakfast. I can't have toast. I can't have grit. I can't have home slice. I can't have, I can't have. And the concept of, you know, maybe having salmon or chicken or something different besides eggs and then having veggies in the morning, I mean, sauteed spinach or avocado, all those concepts are really foreign to people. And a lot of people are racing to get out the door. So having that shake adds a lot of convenience that makes it a lot easier for people to be highly successful. So not only is there the convenience factor that makes it easier when people aren't able to do the diet like they'd like to, but most importantly, uh, it, it makes sure that you're sending all the right messages. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think that's, that's a, uh, a good thing to add there because the, the shapes do often really just make it a lot more convenient to be able to stick with things. Um, I know that, that definitely helps for me, especially in that morning when you're a little bit rushed to get out the door and uh, to be able to grab something that you know is um, what your body's going to need, that protein, uh, first thing in the morning I think is, is really helpful. It's been really helpful for me. All right, so um, this is also taken out of your coaches and participant manual. Uh, this just basically shows how you could break up uh, those different servings. And on the next slide, I've also got uh, a sample, a sample meal plan to show you. Because uh, I think uh, having those sample meal plans in your in your coaches manual and in the participant manual. Uh, make it easier for someone to visualize how they're going to fit all of these things in one day. Because I, I know one of the, the comments that I've gotten from, from a few people is, oh my goodness, that just seems like a lot of food. How am I going to eat all of that in one day? Um, you, spread, you spread it out throughout, and, and, the, and the shakes are there to help support it. Um, but you are definitely eating plenty of food with all of the protein and the, the phytonutrients that you're going to need. Um, also, um, a couple of additional things to remember. Uh, we want to focus on choosing whole foods and stay away from those pre-processed foods. Uh, we've always uh, taught and informed to shop the perimeter and avoid a lot of those inside aisles where the pre-processed food is, is located. Um, we also want to remind you, and you probably all are very aware of this, but it does require a lot of planning and preparation. Uh, I really recommend that you take a look, um, even from the beginning, uh, make sure that you get familiar with Module 6. It's where we go over the, uh, the whole concept of planning and preparing and purchasing healthy foods, and, and share a few of those tips with your participants from the beginning, because uh, this is a meal plan that you do need to prepare for and that you need to uh, plan. You're not just going to kind of end up eating all of these um, areas without thinking about it ahead of time. So make sure you're planning. Also, really emphasize those veggies. Uh, I feel like sometimes that's an area that uh, some of your participants may struggle in or even sometimes ourselves. Uh, it's really important that we do get all of those servings in, for sure. Uh, also, we want to break it up. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar that it's broken up into three meals and two snacks. Uh, what, it, what it allows us to do is to be eating more frequently so that we're keeping those blood sugar uh, levels more level and stable. Did you have something you want to add, Dr. Lamb? Um, no, I think... Sorry, I thought... I, I you were... the moment. 
Okay, great. Um, also, we want to remember to get um, some protein at breakfast. I think we've always talked about that with our, our previous meal plan of the importance of, of starting our day with protein to help uh, jumpstart things for the day. Uh, we also want to remember to practice mindful eating. Um, and uh, if you remember in the, the module where we talk about that, we, we get share some really great tips on how you can just be more more aware and we're staying away from that mindless eating where we're not really being um, conscious or really even accountable to what we're putting into our body. And then um, also the weekly group meetings. Uh, this is something you'll want to remind your participants to do and um, it, it really does help them to stay on track to have that accountability and that support that comes with the group meeting. So uh, something really important that we want to remember. All right, so those are the main slides that we had for the meal plan, and now we're going to open it up for questions. So we've had uh, several good ones in, and I've uh, come in, and I've got Sarah here and Dr. Lamb ready to, to answer those. So let me, let's start with, okay. Well, can I make a, a quick comment, Sandy, before we take the first sure. question? Yeah, absolutely. So, one of the most common things that you will find during the course of doing a study in a food plan like this is people are going to say they're bored. You know, when it starts getting to be the third and fourth week and they've gotten some mastery and some of their food cravings have gone away and they're not really craving the sweet any longer because that's one of the beauties of this diet. Within about two weeks, because you've dropped the glycemic load and you've dropped your insulin level, cravings really go away to a great extent. But people are going to start saying they're bored. So that part that Shandy went through very nicely about you know using your spice rack becomes really, really important. Like when people are broiling chicken and like pre-preparing for the week, suggest to them that they don't spice all the chicken in exactly the same way. You know, they could do like two with the Cajun spice. They could do two with, you know, kind of a southwestern themed spice. They could do two with the Mediterranean spice. And they could do two with like an Asian Thai or Korean or, you know, Chinese spice, depending what they like. And then they've got four different taste sensations to have, you know, as the starting point for their little snack when they're eating their snack. And when they're, you know, having veggies like in the middle of the day, if they cut up those chicken breasts for the week, really tell them to be creative with their spice wrap. You know, using spices is going to change the way, you know, eggs taste, for example. It's going to be dramatically different how your spinach tastes depending how you spice it. And, you know, if you put some added onions in, absolutely nothing wrong with that. If they use a few extra onions, to saute them and toss them in with their spinach to make it so that they get that five ounces of green thin, that's just a good thing. Yeah, I think those are some really great tips. And, and that is something that, um, that I think is a common issue with participants is they do get bored. And so I think giving them ideas, uh, like Dr. Lamb just shared, uh, lets them know that, hey, you don't have to do the same thing every day. We can enjoy eating and we can have variety. So. I think that's really important. Okay, so we have some really great questions coming in. Um, let's take a look and just start going through as many of them as we can. So uh, this first one comes from Dan. He is asking, um, where would chickpea hummus fit, and how much could you have a day? And I think Sarah's got an answer yeah, for it. I will jump in here. So chickpeas are in the legume category. You can have one half cup a day, so either your legume or your fruit. Um, there's probably some olive oil in your hummus as well, so that might count as one of your oils. But chickpea hummus would be a great choice to use for your legume serving, a great way to make your serving of vegetables more exciting. So hummus definitely can fit into the food plan. Yeah, awesome. So in review, it's a legume and one half cup per day. Okay, great. Yeah, and I think that's, that's a great way, and it helps. I know for me it helps me get more vegetables in because then you can dip the vegetables in the hummus and just mix it up a little bit. Yes, yes. Okay, this question comes from Marsha. She asks, um, can the five ounces of greens be cooked or should they always be eaten raw? Okay. 
cooking. So they can definitely be cooked. You want to have a variety of raw and cooked, but you can cook your fresh greens and your vegetables. Uh, we talked about variety and wanting to you know, enjoy what we're eating, so definitely that can play a role there. You can steam them, you can saute them. You can do a lot of different things with your greens. You can throw them into your shake. Uh, so really, you, you don't have to eat them just raw. You're not limited in how you prepare them. So make them fun and exciting. Great. Now I think that's good to, to know that we've got some options there. I think my favorite is trying to put as much in my shake as possible, just so I know that I can get all those greens in for the day. All right. Um, Okay, what about um, purple cauliflower? I actually don't think I've heard of purple cauliflower. It is fun and delicious and definitely is part of the food fund. Cauliflower is listed as one of the recommended vegetables, and purple cauliflower would be a great choice for that. There would be some added phytonutrients that you're getting from that purple color. So absolutely, yes, purple cauliflower is a great vegetable choice. Great. And I think um, one thing that um, just to think of is we don't want to, to over overthink everything too much. If it seems like it fits there and it and it's a healthy choice, it's not pre processed, it should be okay, right? Sarah? Absolutely, that's right. We don't want this to be complicated. We want it to be simple. So there are a few basic guidelines to follow and then um, you know you use common sense after that and probably if you're thinking too much about it, you might be thinking too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's good to know that we do have a little bit of flexibility there. So, all right. So, um, okay. This is a, another question from Dan. He said, when somebody gets to the end of their program and to a healthy weight, would they be able to add any alcohol back in, or um, would you, would you just suggest that they stay away from it? So, Sarah, let me take that one. You know, when you get to the end of the program, you know, hopefully people will have learned different behaviors around food and will have developed different preferences around food. So, you know, there, it, there's nothing magical about what we do, which is one of the reasons why we are so um, thrilled about the curriculum that's been put together, the one that we used in the clinic and the one that Shandy and her team have worked so hard on for those group lessons because you're modifying behavior. And so, of course, people are going to start reintroducing some of their old behaviors, but you're hopefully going to have them have learned their new behaviors. If someone goes back to drinking as much alcohol as they did before, if someone goes back to eating exactly the way they did before they started the program, then weight is going to come back. But if they've learned to be moderate in their alcohol, you know, and learn to be, you know, um, also, you know, moderate in their food choices, then you can look at someone and say, well, there is a place for alcohol, or there is a place for an occasional sweet in your diet, or there is a place for this. Yes, you know, it, alcohol kicks us out of fat burning, but if we've reached our target weight, if we've reached the weight we want to be, and if we're active and we're sending lots of good messages, that having a few negative messages isn't going to change the overall balance. And hopefully with all the behavioral work you'll have done with them about what's good, what's bad, they'll have a whole different way of looking at things. And um, I, I particularly wanted to take this because it brings up the question of not only whether we do about alcohol at the end of um, 13 weeks, but it brings up the question of what do we do in general at the end of 13 weeks. And what I would say, one of the things we have to remember is to assess where each person is individually. If, if they're making good progress, but we haven't reached our goal, you know, maybe they haven't, you know, maybe they've lost 8% of their body weight, maybe they've lost 10%, but you still haven't gotten to the goal that you set for yourself about what would be a healthy weight for them or what's a healthy metabolic age you haven't gotten there. Well, then you decide whether you keep going with the INFORM 1.1 program or whether you switch over to a maintenance phase. And uh, the maintenance program is one, Shandy, that we're working on still, right? We haven't quite launched that yet, but there's a maintenance program that's coming out from a dietary perspective. And why this is important is you want to give people the goals of what to do. But for that person, you know, 
if they haven't gotten to their goal, if they haven't lost 12 to 15 percent yet, I keep going with the INFORM program until they got there. But if you've got someone who's lost 12 to 15 percent of their total body weight and, um, and yet they're not at their goal, you still may want to think about a couple months of maintenance. Because, you know, when I was talking about the body assessing whether yesterday was a good day or yesterday was a bad day, one of the things that becomes really, really important for us to remember is that throughout our history on this planet, we've had to deal with famine more than we've had to deal with peace. And that famine tells us, like, oh my God, kick in all the counter-regulatory mechanisms. Kick in all these mechanisms to protect us against losing more weight. So, you know, if we've gotten to be, you know, a BMI of 35, our bodies don't particularly see that as a bad thing. They don't have a defense against a BMI of 35. But if you get a weight loss of 12 to 15 percent, all of those counter-regulatory mechanisms kick in and the body suddenly starts going, I knew it. It's taken 42 years, but the salmon finally got here, and I've got to do something about it. And during that phase, it becomes very difficult to lose weight. And sometimes being a little bit more gentle in terms of the number of calories coming in and being a little bit, you know, changing the expectation of how fast we really lose weight for a little while as we plateau. We ride out that plateau maybe with the maintenance phase, for a couple of months, and then we say, and you know, the maintenance program is designed not to be necessarily weight neutral. If someone's overweight meeting the, the maintenance program and still continuing to do the supplements, then they continue to probably lose weight. It just won't be as fast. But at the end of doing that maintenance program for a little bit, you then ask yourself, where am I? What do I do? And where do I go from here? And if you're not at the weight goal, then you can go back to the INFORM 1.1 program and run another couple of months. You know, I did a, a fairly long um, phone interview for some blog posts that are coming up um, about the program but yesterday. But one of the things that really came up was, you know, why 90 days? And part of the reason for that 90-day piece is because we expect it from you know our past experiences and from the work that we've done, that within 90 days, the great majority of people who participated, who um, kept with the program, would lose five percent of their total body weight. And it's recognized by the FDA that five percent is a meaningful weight to lose and maintain for a year. That's actually the definition of a healthy drug for weight loss. To help people lose five percent of their weight and maintain it for a year if you took the drug. So we wanted to have a program that 90 days through healthy lifestyle change would get people to that 5%. So that's why we picked the 90 days. But if someone only does the program for 30 days, there'll be some benefit. If they do it for 60 days, they'll have some benefit. And you may well start with someone who doesn't need to lose as much weight. Maybe they're not technically obese. Maybe they don't have a BMI of 30. You know, maybe their BMI is more like 28, and they feel like they're carrying 20 extra pounds and they want to get fit. Or maybe they're getting ready to prepare to do like you know their first half marathon or something, and they want to eat the right diet. This is a great program for kicking that in. And for the person who you know likes the program and you know once a year wants to revisit it, you know, so they've lost a good portion of their weight, they've brought themselves down, they've reached their target, and then, you know, maybe they creep back up over the course of the holidays or whatever, you know, and they've put on maybe, you know, 5, 10, 15 pounds again that they need to lose. Revisiting the program for a month or two kind of as spring cleaning or as a New Year's resolution would be a great thing to do. Yeah, I think um, those are some really great things that you shared there. And I know I know you made uh, mention to a maintenance plan. And yes, we are busy <laughs> working away on that. So stay tuned for, for something coming soon on that. So 
Uh, let's just take a couple more questions, and I've got a few announcements, and then if we have any extra time, we will take as many more as we can. So um, this question comes from Carla. She said, does quinoa, sweet potato, or brown rice fit in this program? Okay, Vera, I think she's got an answer on that one. So when we look at the different types of foods, you'll see that there's not a grain category. And then when you look at the specific vegetables that are recommended, there are no starchy vegetables. So this is a carbohydrate restricted or carbohydrate omitted food plant. So those grains, even healthy grain choices, and the starchy vegetables are omitted from this phase because this is a carbohydrate restricted food plan. So later on in the maintenance food plan that um, Shandy and Dr. Lamb have talked about, those healthy grains will be um, incorporated back. But for this portion of the food plan, it is no, no grains, no starchy vegetables. Uh, great. Um, thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Let's do one other. Um, okay, this one is just real quick. Uh, so the slide did mention five meals and snacks, so it's five total, so what it means is three meals and two snacks, so I'll just clarify that. Um, so this one is from Susan. She said, are the shakes made with just water or can you make them with milk and ice? Do you want to take that one? So you can definitely add things to the shakes. It's recommended to. If you add milk, just remember that milk does count as one of your servings of snack protein. So you're good at that with some food plants. So you wouldn't want to do milk with every one. But if you did choose to use one of your snack proteins as the milk in your shake, that would be great. And ice, definitely. Add ice to, to make it a little more exciting. And then we should talk about adding uh, your greens also. Um, remember that this is just one serving of fruit, so if you did add your fruit, just keep in mind what serving size is allowed here. So yes, you can add things to your shakes. Yeah. Absolutely. We want to have some variety there and not get uh, get bored, right? We want to avoid that, and so it's good to mix it up. And, and I know we've got some really great recipes that we've shared out on our blog and on our Facebook page, so if you need ideas, we are always posting uh, new things out there, so feel free to check that out. All right, so that um, concludes kind of that recorded portion of our webinar that we were rebroadcasting. And um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go through just a couple of announcements really quick, and then I'm going to try to get to some of your questions as well. But like I mentioned earlier, we're going to have another webinar next week about the meal plan, and we can uh, cover a lot more of these in depth. That will be a live webinar with Dr. Pacheco, so make sure you come back then as well. So a couple of things. We actually are launching today on this webinar um, a recipe contest. Um, what we're trying to do is we want to make a recipe page for Inform on our um, website that you can use uh, to gather new recipes that you can share with your participants. And right now we don't have a lot of recipes. And so we wanted to do a contest to help collect a lot of recipes that you've tried and that you like um, and that uh, would work well to share with other coaches. So uh, we are going to have a contest where if you share an inform friendly recipe with us, uh, we will put you into a drawing for some really fun prizes. So we're going to be giving away things like um, the Inform Metabolic Age Support Kits. We're going to give away essential oil diffusers, um, authentic essential oil kits, um, some of the flower essence packs, silver shield, and more. So we have some really exciting prizes. Um, we actually uh, would like you to email those to us at social at natr.com, that email address that you see right there on your screen. And the first 10 people who submit a recipe will receive some fun NSP swag. So um, I, I checked uh, earlier on what that was, and we've got some really nice um, glass water bottles um, that are Nature Sunshine branded. We have some essential oils and some different fun things that, that will be given to those first 10 people who submit a recipe. So, um, and we also will be announcing the winners uh, of those prizes during our Tuesday weekly webinar. So we'll start next week with some winners 
and um, we want you all to participate. You're uh, welcome to submit as many recipes as you would like because we really want to create a really great robust library of recipes for you to use and for all coaches to have access to. So make sure you participate in that. Uh, I also just wanted to go over briefly of our Start Your Group promotion that we have running for August. Uh, if you start a group this month with five or more new participants, um, you're going to receive a $150 product credit to Nature Sunshine. And you can use that product credit on anything that you'd like. You can use it on um, products to sample for your group or for giveaways or for supplies, whatever you need. You can use that $150 product credit. We also have new this month uh, and a way that you can earn additional product credits based on the, the sales within your inform group. So if your inform group um, reaches 600 QV or more in inform product sales, you will get an additional $150 product credit. Um, and that would be like three people from your group um, starting one of the inform kits. And if you reach $1,000 or 1,000 QV in inform product sales, you'll get an additional $300 product credit. So that is $450 total. So, and just so that you're aware, um, products that we count in that QV is the inform kits um, and any of the inform products separately. So that would be like the protein, the inform protein. Um, the Inform Berberine, the Inform Probiotic, or the Cardio Kit would all kind of fall in that category. And just as a reminder, you can upload your group at informnsp.com and just click on the coach sign in. Uh, also, really quickly, I want to go over the Inform Challenge. Um, I know that we've talked about this a lot on our webinars, but um, just so you know, it is a great um, contest to get your participants involved in. They can join any time and they just run their 13 weeks and they can participate. So they'll submit their before information and then also their after information after the 13 weeks. And we have a new list of prizes and um, I hope that you've all had a chance to download a copy of the slides because it has all this information. But the first place winner gets $1,000 cash plus a photo shoot and a makeover, plus convention for two and a $300 product credit, plus you as their coach will get a $500 cash prize. Um, so just take a look at those prizes. And also, every participa participant who um, joins and completes the challenge will actually get a $25 product credit. So everybody benefits for joining the challenge. Um, also, just as a reminder, we are working on collecting 200 testimonials um, by our summit events that are coming up in September, and we all want you all to participate. Um, this can be something that your participants fill out or that you fill out, um, but we want you to share your stories. We know there are some amazing stories. We hear about them all the time, but we want you to actually write them down and share them with us so that we can recognize you for that. So. Um, in your handouts, there's a spot where you can download um, download that. So, um, so go ahead and download that form and email it into us at inform in hyphen form at natr.com. And you can actually just type right into the form and email it to us, or you can print it, fill it out by hand, and scan it and send it to us. Uh, we will take it however um, you would like. So um, just as a reminder, our next webinar is also going to be about the meal plan. It is next Tuesday, 11 a.m. Mountain Time. We have Dr. Pacheco from our Scientific and Medical Advisory Board that will be joining us. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to go even further in depth um, on the meal plan. And I know we were a little bit out of time to take a lot of questions. Uh, but bring these questions next week. Um, I'll take a note of these as well to see if we can answer as many of your questions as possible. So um, please make sure to, to join us for that. And I just want to thank each of you for taking the time, for being with us, um, and to our presenters, even though they weren't here today. Thanks to Dr. Lamb and to Sarah um, from our team here at Home Office um, uh, for giving us an even a more in-depth look on the meal plan. And we will be back next week. Thanks, everybody.